Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs pregame show podcast, and it is showdown time on the north side. Luke Stuckmeyer, Cody Del Mendo, and Joey's back running the ones and twos. Show Joey! We may if show you know, you know. if the Cubs win, if we may know, show you know. Joey today. If you know, you know. Only the OGs know what that means. We brought Joey back mm-hmm. for the big games. <laughs> brought Joey back for the big oh. games. Joey, he's having technical difficulties already. Hold on. Technical Hold on, Joey. It's great, it's great to uh, be back here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, right in time for hopefully the uh, Cubs playoff push. First yeah. time, you know, I haven't been here since the show. I left. That's right. Cubs are sort of miserable. Now they're not totally different feeling. You took receipts. I you took the receipts. Just remember that one. I think that was rece- three games I, in the season. Never forget you took the receipts after opening weekend. Yep, fans That's did right. not. Fans didn't like that one. But. <laughs> so Joey's here, Cody's here, I'm here, Steve's here. We're all here. Gary's here in the chat. Niren's here. All the regulars are here. And yes, Niren, what a difference six weeks makes. Cubs are in this still. Four games back. Now, remember, they just finished a 12-game stretch that I said I thought was critical if they were going to win this division. I still believe that. And Dan Plezak said they 8-4, and four, they would show that they're a playoff team. The problem is the Brewers have won eight straight. So 8-4 and four didn't cut it. The Cubs actually lost ground by going 8-4. and four. Yeah. I wanted to see at least nine wins. Um, okay, so it's one game different. But that's what this could come down to. Yeah. I and wanted to see nine as well. So but here we go. We'll take and, eight and four. And the Brewers, the crazy thing is they did their eight straight against much tougher competition, right? They, they were, the Cubs were playing bottom feeders. That's why we were saying, listen, they can win nine out of 12 here. Uh, they're just lucky they didn't get swept by the Sox. They're lucky they didn't <laughs> lose a couple other games in that series. So they're in it. They're four games out. The three game set against the Brewers starts tonight at Wrigley Field. The Brewers lead the season series four games to three so far. Andrew, finally joining a pregame show. Shout out to you. Uh, I haven't seen Barb yet, but yeah, this is live for all of you that are asking. Uh, Thanks to everybody who's watching in the chat. We appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up if you would. Becky asked if I did any gambling in Vegas. Yeah, I did. I did do some gambling in Vegas, and I came back with less money. However... I watched Nicholas Moriano win $1,200 playing roulette. What? And now I'm a full believer that anything is possible. Anything's possible. Here's, Cubs I, are winning I, the World Series this year. Well, I was going to ask you this. So <laughs> right now you could go to your DraftKings app and you could place a bet on the Cubs to win the World Series, right? You can, yes. Right. But isn't it more fun if you do it in Vegas? Yeah. Nothing I, against DraftKings. I'm just saying if you, have a, if you can place a Cubs bet while you're in Vegas, there's a little different juice to it, mm-hmm. right? Well, Maybe you want to do it both places for a little extra luck. Thing is, is I'm, I didn't want to place a future bet in Vegas because I don't plan on going back anytime That's right. soon. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. And I, I wanted to do hit parlays for the Cubs games while I was in Vegas, but at Circa, they didn't have any player props. For, uh, unless I, I had the way that the state of Nevada works, I was going to have to go register at some location because you have to be registered or something gotcha. in the state of Nevada for whatever. I, it was a very confusing thing. However, I, I knew how to use a slot machine, and I knew how to play blackjack, and that did not go my way. Didn't go that way. No, but no. for Moriano, mm-hmm. Moriano, I sat there and watched him win $1,200 playing roulette. Now, did it he was, walk out of Vegas up twelve? Did he get on the plane up $1,200? Uh, more than that because he won 500 the night before. So about $1,700 he left Vegas with. Well, now, I, I want to assume he was buying some drinks. Well, or are we going to have gonna, to, are we gonna have He's going to be buying him? me drinks for the next for this entire football season. at the tail, uh, Well, not at the tailgates because they're – Goose Island is yeah. sponsoring them. But, uh, you know, I'm going to make it a, a, he a owes very, you. Yeah, I'm making it a very big attempt to, hey, Nick, you want to hang out this weekend? I, I know you got all this money. You can buy my drinks. Right. <laughs> well, it, if you were good luck for Moriano, we hope you're good luck for the Cubs tonight. Uh, going against Mr. Miley, will it be the Wade Miley revenge game? He's been, he's been decent for them. Yeah. He just wasn't healthy for the Cubs. Yeah. Uh, and he's... He's been he's always been decent with Milwaukee. It's not his first stint there. Um, I like tonight's lineup, even with Patrick Wisdom in there. I was going to ask you that. Uh, the first thing that happens if the Cubs lose tonight will be the why is Hat batting third? Why are Talkman and Morell not in the lineup? Well, 
Morell's. We know they, the answer, but Morell, he's gotten a handful of days off recently. Yes, he has. Um, and probably rightfully so. He's been really struggling this month. Uh, but they're DHing wisdom, and that's kind of why I'm okay with that. I yeah. did not. I like, saw first base again. I recently. I yeah, yesterday. I, <laughs> I know. And, and I, I and I, and I didn't like that. But they wanted to get Bellinger off his feet, and that's and they DH Bellinger, and it worked out. They scored ten runs. All right, so yeah. whatever. Wisdom actually had a hit yesterday, he, and he didn't have any errors at first base, so it worked out. Tonight he's DH, so his defense isn't going to hurt you, and you got the best defensive lineman lineup out there for Jameson Tyone, Magical at third, Candy at first. Both have been fine at each position, and Bellinger in center with Happen Swan, uh, Happen uh, or not Happen, but Horner and Swanson up the middle. I I feel like defensively at least they're set up very nicely tonight. Uh, but yeah, wisdom. You're he's in there because he's facing the lefty. I'm hoping I you know once Miley comes out if it's a righty they're going to pinch him. Right, they, they did that yesterday. Right. Has anyone uh, kicked the tires for? Um Candelario's nickname to be Oppenheimer? No, no, Candyman. Candy Oppenheimer, man. you know, he Candy hits, he hits bombs. <laughs> Oppenheimer. Keep it, keep it in mind. Uh, belly bomb shirt now available at the all CHGO, uh, CHGO locker. Yep. Um, Niren says Talkman is cold. Uh, Becky doesn't think Wisdom will be on the team next year. Colada's calling for three strikeouts. Can we keep the vibes positive, people? Let, let, let's keep the vibes positive. I. I know. In fact, I was thinking this series is so big that maybe we should have done a pregame show beer bat chug. Just, maybe maybe just it should have been. Maybe vibes. we should to increase the vibes. Maybe we should have bookended the beer bats. Oh, you didn't say anything. I, I know. I just thought of it as we were walking over. I'm like, that's ah, too late. But we maybe should have. If they don't win, that's what we blame it on. We didn't bookend the beer bats. All right. And probably the line. We're willing to take the blame for the loss tonight, guys. Big of us. When's the last time you had uh, this type of anxiety or, or excitement going into a Cubs regular season series? 2019? Probably that's last series against the Cardinals. Yeah. That was terrible. It didn't go well, but that's the, last, that's the last time a series really actually mm-hmm. meant something. Yeah. I mean... It's a long, that's a long time. As far time. as like a full season, yeah. I mean, there were some series in that pandemic year that I guess mattered. Uh, yeah, but I maybe, never considered that a full season. That was like, yeah. a, that was like a Cactus <laughs> League championship. Yeah. I, some of those series and before the deadline in 2021 were important, but it didn't, you never felt like you do now because it was the beginning of the year. So, yeah, I'd say uh, September 2019 against the Cardinals. Uh, in which I believe the Cubs got swept, and it was a freaking bloodbath. Uh, Cubs offense completely died that weekend. Uh, whatever. Uh, don't let me. Re- don't remind me about that. The Cardinals sucked Sorry. this year. Sorry, I brought back the bad vibes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of turning things around and, and going positive, Michael Collada now says Tom Ricketts best owner ever. Oh wow! So there's the positivity we're looking for. Where is that? I need to see that. Holy shit! Yeah. Now that he should be clipped. That it. should be clipped off and put into the archives somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I we wish have I the could receipts. Re- we have the receipts, Godfather. We should be able to freeze that and clip it off. I wish it was Twitter and I could retweet it <laughs> with a quote. And it's not Twitter anymore, of course. Whenever we it's get, X now. Whenever we finish the show, I'm going to come back to this moment and screenshot this just to then tweet it myself. <laughs> so Morell, Morell's out of the lineup. Just screenshot for you guys. Talkman. Morell is out, and you're saying, you know, it's been a few days. One guy that that certainly has worked for most recently is Seiya Suzuki. Yeah. Now, Seiya has been red hot in the last... He's got a 10-game hitting streak going. Batting 432 with eight extra base hits. That includes a pair of homers, a triple, and a bunch of doubles. So, he's been... Uh, it's been hot. Listen, that's, that's the way you need Seiya Suzuki to bat in order for this lineup to pretty much reach its potential. You need Bellinger to do what he's doing. Le- guys leading off, but... Mm-hmm. When this lineup is best, you can have Saya a little bit lower in the lineup, giving you production like that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, regarding Saya, I've said this before. I said that I was taking him for who you got on August 9th, and what happened? He's proceeded to get hot since I took him on August 9th. So, one might say I manifested the hot streak. Uh, yeah, I like I like the way he's swinging the bat. 
and like we said, when he was struggling, remember he sat for those few games, and I think that first game he came back, he had a couple hits, and we all sat, me, you, and Ryan sat on this post-game show and was like, it's going to be interesting to see how they manage this now. Is he going to be a platoon guy, or right. was this was the, just those days off – kind of a mental reset we've learned now that it was a mental reset because he's been in the lineup every day since then and yeah he's been performing he they were putting him at you know in the in the seven eight hole uh to, at the start of that now he's making his way back up to five six most nights now and I like that I've never I never really liked him in that four hole Bellinger has played so well that there's no way they're moving him out of that spot and if they do it's because they're moving him up finally for an Ian half spot like we keep clamoring for but whatever uh, I just I like the way that they managed that, and it's you know it it's good for him, uh, you know like the games it's a long year it's a marathon as everyone says and he was he had he had two tough months man yeah, and dude. like what's crazy now is like as bad as though he was those Not two just bad, months disappointing yeah as, as disappointing as those two months were. His war is about the same as it was last year, and they still have another month to play. So, like, he could technically be – you could look at at the end of the year, we might say, well, he ended up having a better year than last year. And I don't know if people would agree with that just based off the eye test. So, uh, obviously another month to play, but it is good to see the power show up lately in the second half in general. Because they, they, that's what they need from him. They need him to not only hit but slug a little bit. And he continues to have good at-bats while doing it too. So that's kind of like what we were told about him is that he's a professional power hitter. Right. And so I know we haven't got the 30 home run, say, a Suzuki like we were all hoping. But if he finishes the season strong, he has a good month of September on top of this month of August – you feel good about him going into October probably, and you feel good about him going into next year. So, you know, I'm just happy for the guy. I've never wavered, always believed. Never faltered Cody Del Mendo yeah. in his <laughs> belief of Seiya Suzuki. Uh, so, you know, I never doubted the Brewers' rotation. I always thought they had good pitching. Yeah. Uh, I questioned whether their offense was good enough. And... One guy that has obviously helped them be as good as they've been this season, Yelich has been good Yelich. Like, that makes a big difference for the Brewers. So my question is, what do you expect out of Tyone against that lineup tonight? Because, let's face it, the offense can do whatever they want. Tyone needs to pitch like the free agent they went and got. Like, we need to see good Jamison Tyone for the Cubs to beat the Brewers tonight, well, in my opinion. Remember, I... Uh, to me, I think he's coming in to start with a lot of confidence because he pitched five no-hit innings against the Tigers, and okay, that sixth inning didn't go well, gave up the game-tying grand slam, whatever. We sat on, I sat on this chair, and I told you all that I thought it was the right move to leave him in, uh, and they ended up winning that game anyway. So he had one, bad, one really bad pitch against the Tigers that resulted in a grand slam. Right. You got to avoid uh, the – I mean, it was a bad he, pitch. Right, but he was great for five scoreless innings. And honestly, I'm asking for five or six quality innings from him tonight. Uh, you know, yesterday allowed them to save the bullpen a little bit, right? You didn't use right. any high leverage guys. So, Alzelay, Merriweather especially, he didn't pitch the last two days, I don't believe. Uh, they'll be able to come in a little bit fresher. And to me, if they're going to win this series, they got to win tonight. It's going to be tough to win two straight against Burns and Woodruff. So, to me, they got to win tonight. And as long as Tyone keeps the ball in the ballpark, I think they ha he has a good chance to, be, to, to keep them in the game. I know we're all going into this thinking they need to win at least two out of three. Of course, that's for the division title. Yeah. I agree. If they, if they were to get swept or lose two out of three, things would start to look very bleak mm -hmm. as far as not impossible, but I, I wouldn't. I don't love that they went eight and four against bad teams, but they're still in the mix for the the uh, wild card thing, which is going on. And th but those teams follow up after the Brewers, so you're going to get a good taste of everybody here. So while that was a big twelve game stretch, now you've about a ten day stretch that's important for different reasons. 
You should have feasted on those other teams. Now you get your chance to do some things. It would have been nice to uh, have a sweep in there for sure, but they won every series they played over that stretch. Boy, you can you can great well, except the White Sox. You one. could greatly improve your playoff chances by sweeping the Brewers at Wrigley Field if they the next sweep three the days. Brewers, if they, I'll go on record. I mean, I've already said anyway. Like I think they're making the playoffs, but if they sweep the Brewers, they're winning the division. I think they win. They're going to win the division if they sweep the Brewers. All right. There you get. Who, by the way, who had you more excited over the last week? Was it Assad or Wicks? Spin zone or alternate? Somebody else. Alternate. Alternate answer? Keegan Thompson last night. Keegan Thompson. The mayor's back. <laughs> mayor's back. Uh, really, honestly, it was probably more so Jordan Wicks just because he was his major league debut. But don't sleep on the ass, man. It's the autumn of the ass, man, Luke. Like. Don't ever. That's right. The autumn of the ass man is already underway. That's why I would say it was Wicks too, because we already know that the autumn of the ass man is already underway. Yeah, it's been underway since Toronto, or the month. It could be the month of the mayor. We don't know. All I'm saying is, if Keegan Thompson is what we saw against Pittsburgh yesterday, the rest of the year, if he if he pitches a couple more low leverage spots and earns some like high leverage or at least meaningful innings down the stretch here, and he's good, watch out. Because this bullpen will it will t- go up another notch if he's back. If he's back, back. Do you hate the Brewers more than you hate the Cardinals? No, no. I, Cardinals I do, are I, number no. one despise. Number one. Then number it's the one. Brewers. So they're the number, number two one. dislike I, team. I, I, I hate St. Louis more than a lot of things in my life. Do you dislike the Brewers more than you dislike the White Sox? Yes. Cardinals. Brewers. White Sox. Or not so. even White Sox. There, I don't even really have the White you Sox. Just don't on have a, you don't have a take on that. Yeah, no, I don't have a take on that. That's kind of how. However, I, like I do think it would be absolutely hilarious if the White Sox did move to Arlington Heights. I'd have to move. <laughs> uh, here's here's what I'm thinking. This is a big series, right? So yeah. if if I don't I think we don't have another pregame, but we might have to double up the beer bats. So Joey's here tonight. Joey, you're here for post game too. Big of him. He might have to bite a can if the Cubs win. You guys might have to double do it. We might have to bite the can and shotgun one. We'll, we'll, I don't want to get everybody too excited, but that's what we're... And I, we're going to talk about the future of the Cubs here in a second. But speaking of excited, let me tell you what you're, you're, you're in store for here. Baby. The official CHGO tailgate ticks, ticks. are already on sale, baby. The ticks. On sale for Bears games. 20% off for all the diehards out there. This year, our tailgate, which it was lit last year. It was lit. This year, new place, and I know this location. I partied with these people when I did beer money a couple times. Wild group. Wild group. Great location. Corner of Wabash and Cermak. Tickets to the tailgates this year will include all your Goose Island drinks and all-you-can-eat firewater barbecue. Bingo. I'm not saying there might be donuts. Sometimes there's donuts in the morning. There were sometimes donuts at Tailgate. And if you want to find me, me, you'll find me by the donuts. Let me just say, last year, we didn't do a tailgate until week two, and it was against the Texans. Mm -hmm. And over 200 people showed up. This is week one against the Packers. Oh, it's going to be way bigger than that. Yeah. I'm just saying, I am looking forward to it. Have you seen Lollapalooza? Yes. I'm I'm, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be something like that. And I'm telling y'all, it's a good time. I had a great time at the warm tailgates last year. The cold ones kind of a yeah. kind of kind of not cold. my thing. Near said don't leave your phone on top of your car. That's great advice, although <laughs> yeah. mine was so frozen it stuck to the top of the car. Yeah. Uh hey, we got great teams. Yeah, Packers week 1, you get the Broncos week 2. That Broncos one could also will also be, I believe, the final game of the regular season. Yeah. Where everything could, come, it, everything could come down to that day in uh-huh. Chicago sports, right? Yeah. For the Cubs, at least. And then you got a huge Bears game at home against the Broncos. The now, will be in addition something. to the tailgate ticks being released and out there for you to join us, because we're all going to be there having a good time. We want you to be there as well. The merch sale started tonight, just in time for the Brewers series. Absolutely. Now you're thinking, oh, wow, you guys got some cool... Yeah, we got some cool new shirts. We got the Belly Bombs. Uh, we've got the Sweet Emotion out there. We've got the CHGO Bricks and Ivy. We've got the... Uh, hey, Chicago, what do you say? Beautiful and Historic. Beautiful hey, Chicago, historic. what do you say? You got the Brawler, like you see in our logo for the pregame show. You can, you can, if you like 
the Blackhawks show. Like I, this, I'm not really a Blackhawks guy. I just got guy, so I just I, like I just bought show. I just bought a bunch of them. Twenty four bucks. Yeah, it's what they're going right now. Twenty four bucks at allchjo.com. Yeah. So it's a short sale. They're clearing out the locker right now. Go ahead and get stock up on those Cubs one because you're going to need them with for the playoff run. Yeah, you're going to want to watch wear something new every day. You don't want to wear the same shirt all the time. Uh, Joey Smith, the super chat five bucks says. In one road trip, I went through Satan, Lewis, and Milwaukee. And as much as I hate Milwaukee, St. Louis made me feel nauseous. Cubs in four. Hell yeah, Joey. Tweet of the night yeah. so far. That's the tweet. Chat of the that's, night. That's the chat, chat of the, of the night. night so far. Um, it, do, it makes me nauseous, too. Also, their pizza sucks. Okay. Uh, we've got 40 likes and two thumbs down, but two thumbs down equals two thumbs up. Or don't want the facts going one thumb, started. one finger up, but it's a different story. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Justin says Clark will fly the W. Go Cubs, go. Carter wants half to DH. Did you guys see that Matt Shaw was promoted to Double A already? I did see that. Which is hot. So have had like wild. their first round pick from this year. The kid out of the shortstop out of Maryland, uh, slashing three ninety three, four twenty seven, and six fifty five. Four homers, seven steals, and just. 20 games at high A. And well, that's, mainly that's been one playing. reason why, he, if you think a college guy is good, that's why you draft a college guy, because they're, yeah. they're going to help you sooner than, right. than a high school And I think he's kid. mainly been playing short or second base. But I think long term, obviously, the idea of moving him to third is something I hope the Cubs have in mind this offseason. Right. Because... Swanson and, and Nico up the middle for the, for the foreseeable future... Um, but yeah, no, it's exciting. The, the draft class so far has, has been exciting. Uh, well, the last two first round picks, you know, Kate Horton's in double A too. Right. He was just drafted last year and also college. Right. Gary the, saying, uh, he believes Gary Ross, <laughs> friend of the show, friend of the show. uh, says he believes he's going to be the third baseman next year. I mean, he ain't going to be here opening I think, day, but... <laughs> I, I will say this. If Christopher Morrell is not part of an off-season move that tries to bring back more pitching or whatever it might be for the Cubs, yeah. um, then I believe he best work very hard on third base in the off-season. Yes. They need to give him the he Madrigal He needs to work as hard this off-season on third base as Madrigal did last yeah. off-season. Whatever the training was, you just put Christopher Morrell in there and... And, and, and make him do it all off season. And Carter, I'm not against that. Uh, candy coming back and playing third. Yeah. I think that's an they opportunity They have a lot of too. options. Yeah. Well, they have more options than they had going into this season. Right. So it's we'll, a good problem to have. We'll, we'll see how it all unfolds. But I think, you know, at, while everybody's excited about Shaw, that's always a possibility, too. You're trying to get people back. You've promoted this guy quickly. Other teams see that. Mm -hmm. So it's not a guarantee that any prospect is a sure fit for this team moving forward. Maybe PCA. Because I think we're going to see PCA here in September, and they're going to get a good look and at him. And full days left until they're PCA They're going to get a good a look at him, Cubs. too, before they make a decision on how far how far they want to bid on Bellinger in the offseason. Yeah. That's the I, key. Like, I, Not that I, I think they should have both, Yeah, but then you'd have to convince Bellinger to probably play a little more first base, or, well, or you trade one of the corner outfielders and you tell PCA. Well, those corner outfielders have a no-trade clause. I, so well, I you'd know. have to talk him into it. Right. Yeah. Listen, the, the sad, unfortunate Otani news kind of makes it, to me, an automatic. You, Bellinger's your number well, one it also priority. means a lot of teams are going to be going after Bellinger. I know. But, but anyway. he's been playing here, and they didn't trade him. And I feel like That's right. that might have something to do with it. He likes so. Baseball's better. Yeah. Theo Baseball. said it. Baseball's better in the bleachers. Yeah. So. Baseball's better with We'll talk about it when we get to the, the offseason. All right, we'll talk about it in the offseason. like. To me, Bellinger has to be when, number one priority. Number I just thought one. that when people were excited on Twitter today talking about Shaw going right away to Double A, and I was like, "Cool, I you know, great that they found a guy that could be major league ready pretty soon." Yeah, but he also could be real attractive with another team if you decide to go that route. Either way, make the team better. That's fair too. If you draft He's well, already in the top one hundred, I believe. If you draft well, pipeline. If you draft well, you'll be able to make your team better in, in multiple ways. Uh, I could right. be wrong about that, him being number one, or not number one, but in the pipeline, top 100. Who you but. got tonight? Who you got? Who uh, you got? I, we got about three weeks of who you got totals to go back and uh, <laughs> total up. I know so, I had some luck. 
I'm going Hap tonight because I got to go back to the bit of saving, saving the season. season. Got to save the season. Now, I took Wisdom yesterday just because everyone was yelling at me in my Twitter mentions, but Wisdom's DHing tonight. I can live with Wisdom DHing. We got to save Ian Hap's season, so I'm taking him. And he had he actually good he had a good weekend in Pittsburgh to be honest with you, but um, we got I I gotta I gotta remain consistent. There's two things that have led to us saving the season, Luke. That is Mike Talkman's game saving catch in in St. Louis and my return. Oh, okay, no. three things. Three things. Three things, three things that have thank saved you, the season. Thank you, Luke Stuckmeyer's return. Mike Talkman's catch in St. Louis and me sacrificing who you got well, that's, that's for true. the last like yeah. three months. That's okay. Right. We give me Ian Happ. We he's I batting right handed in the three hole. It makes me want to hurl, but he's having a night tonight because I'm taking him for who you got. All I want to mm. see tonight is Adbert giving the tiger pump after the Ooh, game. Absolutely. Really, really giving the maybe council looks over and he sees the old Advert fist pump. That's what we're looking for. Um, yeah, I went I went with Belly because big bats play in big big, big games, and that's what we got tonight. Yeah. Belly bombs. Belly bomb. I'd like to see a belly bomb flying out of Wrigley Field, but I'd also take three hits. He's and just, he could, that's a guy that can do it either or both. I think yesterday was a great example of what he's done all season against lefties, just shooting that Crazy. ball the other way. Yeah. Oh, man, he's so fun to watch hit. So I like Belly tonight. He's in the hit parlay. Hit parlays, belly, candy, and Saya. It's just so nice that, man, we're all, September's here at the end of the week. We're watching games that matter. Absolutely. But tonight is not just a game that matters. Tonight's a game that matters. Matters. You know, it might not be a playoff game, but they, I guarantee you, the old building's going to be burning up tonight. <laughs> Rock, those seats are going to be rocking like when Morell hit that home run against the White Sox. Wrigley's going to be on fire tonight. Yeah, it's an atmosphere that, like we said, haven't been around for a handful of years. Kind of jealous. Corey's in the seats tonight. I wish I was there. But yeah, instead, and he gets those free brownies in the press box, which are mm. legit. Big of mm. us to do this Big show while Ryan and, and Corey are at the ballpark. You know? Robbie agrees with me, Cody, and also Steve. Oh. He, he forgot that part. Thanks, Robbie. Robbie, we appreciate it. He says Cubbies. Uh, anybody else got anything hot? Any uh, hot takes? Anybody got a who you got tonight? Joey didn't make one. Big triumphant return and know who you got pick. Is Gomes playing? Gomes yeah. is playing. And, and let me tell you, it, he's been great. He's been great, I yeah. Know. I'll take Gomes. Not a joke. I don't know why Joey, you think I'm Joey like wants Gomes. Put it in there. <laughs> It's not like well, a joke. Listen, to me. you took Gomes. Jason Hayward all season because last I believed year. in him. <laughs> Joey saved the season by believing in Jan Gomes. Yes, there you go. I thought it was. I Look, thought even we, Joey. He was in Wisconsin all am summer. Am I wrong? Manifesting, still manifesting. Manifesting. Yeah, he was in all Wisconsin. The way up there. I thought Joey when he left said, "Put me down for Hosmer the rest of the season." No. Or was it Mancini? <laughs> no. It may have been. May, it it might have been. been I, think it, I think it was a. a well, I, I thought would, I was taking Mastroboni a lot. I was taking Mastroboni a lot. We had a week. We had a really good a lot week of, taking wisdom. of the summer of Miles Mastroboni, all right? It was a fun week. Oh, the Eminem um, brothers. Yeah. That's, other, that's our next shirt, probably. We also had the M &M summer brothers, of Jared Young, Mastroboni Young, too. and Madrigal. Hot that lasted presses. three days. But. Already sold out, I heard. Anyway. The Eminem brothers shirt sold out last night before <laughs> it even released. Before it was released. Yeah. It's that hot. Yeah. It Positive was, vibes from Michael Collada. We love it, Godfather. Wow, Godfather. Very nice. Where were you when Godfather was? Colbert says, hot take. He's vibes. going Tyone. Now, we're not, allowed, we're not allowed to take pictures, but that can't stop the chat. The chat can't can the take chat. whoever they want. So if you want to take big of him, J-Mo, J-Mo, J-Mo. It's big of him. It's big of him. I like J-Mo tonight. Credit to you. Credit to you. David Snyder's Cole. going a two-dinger night for wisdom. Ooh. Ooh, lefty. We better save that Soft comment because if he lefty. does hit, if he hits two dongs, we're going to have to revisit that comment right there. Yeah. PD's going Gomes as well. Gomes does mash lefties. So. Oh, my. It's 7 1. We've got to go watch the game. Thanks for <laughs> checking out the jobs. CHGO mm -hmm. Cubs pregame show podcast. We're back here right after the game for at least an hour of hot takes. Hopefully, it's not a therapy session, it's a beer bat party. Until Absolutely. then, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Fly the W. Bye.